All right, y'all, welcome back to another episode of Technical Knockout, the hardcore casual MMA podcast. I'm your host, Hussein. With me, as always, my co-host, Jordan Patrick James. What's going on? Today, we got a special episode for y'all. We're bringing in the heavyweight from one championship, Odie Delaney. Hey, what's going on, guys? Yes, sir. We're going to get an interview done. We're going to talk about some fights. It's going to be a, it's going to be a good time, y'all. Let's do it. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure everybody's seen it or at least saw the, uh, you know, the aftermath. But uh, Francis Ngannou put on the performance of his life against the best heavyweight boxer of this generation. Uh, and that is certainly right now, um, a lot of people wrote him off before the fight. You know, myself included, I'm not going to lie. Uh, in the pre-fight podcast, I said that I didn't think that he had much of a chance uh, against Fury. I thought Fury was going to be much more nimble. I thought he would be, you know, staying on the outside. I think it's just a, a testament to Francis's willpower and Francis's, you know, uh, just capabilities as an athlete to grow and learn in the ring um, that he was able to put on that performance. That he was able to knock down Fury and able to, you know, win rounds off of him in boxing exchanges, not just, you know, landing the heavier punches. Uh, mm. Did you guys get a chance to see the fight? Yeah, I, some, I did. I did. Yeah, I saw some clips and it was it was satisfying. Yeah, it's insane. And I mean, I like Fury. You know, what I mean, don't get me wrong, but yeah, it was, not, it was nothing boy. against Fury. And, you know, Fury was very adamant, like, you know, I didn't because especially you so with instances of promoting the next fight before the Ngannou fight was done. He's like, I didn't choose that. I wouldn't really do that, but that people got that out of my hands. It's mm-hmm. like everybody else that was kind of, you know, talking that shit for him. Like I was go, I was looking at like uh, the Joe Rogan clips on the, uh, talking about that fight that didn't age well. And all these boxers and old boxers saying, you don't have a chance, dude. There's no yeah. way. <laughs> this and, that. and then like watching it back, it's like, damn, that, that did not age well. Well, I think it comes from, you know, these these kind of like uh, spectacle fights with the Pauls, you know, yeah. Jake Paul and all that, you know, it's like MMA's kind of getting their butt handed to them in the in the boxing world. And I think everyone thought that this was just going to be, you know, a repeat, you know, and then you got, you know, Fury, you know, the best arguably heavyweight ever. Um, everyone went into that fight thinking the same thing. I mean, I'm even guilty of it. I didn't. I didn't think he that Nagani was gonna do as well as he did, and like I'm looking right now at the final the punch stat report. Man, I mean Nugano did really really well. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. incredible. I mean, in boxing too, you know what I mean? Like it's not like he came in there like uh, Connor and was like you know taking his back and like acting like it was an MMA fight or like Diaz and throwing up a guillotine like. He boxed him. He outboxed mm-hmm. him in several rounds. You know, yep. if anybody was treating like an MMA fight, it was Fury. Fury threw that elbow. Yeah, true. Oh yeah. man, he, yeah, that short cross that turned into an elbow right on the temple. That was yeah, and, and Ngannou took it and just went for it. I loved it, man. Like, yeah. I mean, come on, you can't look at Ngannou and be like, okay, I'm pretty sure that dude. If you ask me, could that dude move mountains? I'd look at him. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, probably. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not gonna bet against it. Yeah. No, but, not at all. And I know he's 37, but, you know, one, black don't crack. And then two, you know, with uh, with advancements in and, you know, medical science, I don't think he's too outside of his prime. Like, and he's just one of those athletes that if he's like, oh, I'm going to go and beat the world heavyweight boxing champion. Like, I'm going to believe him for a minute. Yeah, you know? I mean, I it's think not, it's I get I think you're right, Odie. I think people did start to be like, oh, the boxing MMA spectacle. But I think they keep on forgetting that it was. Ben Askren, way out of his prime. Tyson Woodley, way out of his prime. Right. Uh, Nate Diaz, way out of his prime. And like, maybe it's just like that kind of got it off. It's like, oh, no. And it's like, no, this is a dude that is, would still be the UFC heavyweight champion, you know, 100%. right now, most likely, or it would be right. against him and Jones. Um, right. So this is realistically UFC heavyweight champion currently against the linear heavyweight champion. Right. It's, right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think also heavyweights have a bit more of a like an elongated prime. You know what I mean? You see guys like Daniel Cormier going well until his forties. You know, oh, Stipe. Yeah. Uh, the list goes on and on. Randy Couture, Teixeira. Like, you know, yeah, exactly. Teixeira. A lot, a lot of a lot of fighters uh, and the higher weight classes. You know, will will do even better in their th- late thirties and early forties. You know what I, I mean? So, yeah, I think that all has to do with reaction time. Because, you oh, know, yeah. the lighter weight classes, it's just so much speed. You know, the first thing to go as we get older is our reaction time. And 
not necessarily the strength. Like you don't start losing a lot of muscle mass till your mid forties, you know, late Mm -hmm. forties as men, but you do lose reaction time. But the thing is at the heavyweight division, punches just aren't being thrown fast enough for it to really matter. If that makes sense. (laughs) Like you can have a slower reaction time and still be fine. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And they always say power is the last thing to go, you know? That's right. I'm when sure talk- Gano is still going to be knocking dudes out when he's 45. You yeah, know? We, when we talk about it on the oh, podcast, absolutely. About how how about like and the the lighter weights, like it really it, age does play a huge factor. But yeah, you're right with like I mean Derek Lewis, he could still knock anybody out. Yeah, uh, I mean great transition. Let's let's talk about that Lewis versus Almeida fight that's coming up this weekend. Um, so oh, yeah. you know for people who might not be familiar with Jalton Almeida, Jalton Almeida is uh, used to be called the uh, heavyweight Khabib. Uh, he's a, a big takedown artist, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu specialist, um, maybe a little bit, uh, one dimensional in his, uh, approaches when it comes to the wrestling game. He tends to use the same setup every fight. He loves his front kick into a low double. Um, if he can't get that low double, he's happy to chain wrestle or, you know, just fight really hard to get that position. Once he's on top, I don't think I've seen anybody in the UFC, uh, either heavyweight or light heavyweight, be able to get him off of them once he's on top of them. Um, and he'll, you know, move <laughs> position to position, use that arm triangle, use that, uh, that Kimura dude, super slick on top. Um, that being said, he does weigh in on the lower end of the heavyweight spectrum around 225, 230, but the technique is, uh, so great from him that it doesn't seem to matter much when he's taken down 260, 270 pound dudes. Um, yeah. what do you guys got in this fight? Well, you know, it's he is a good takedown artist, and he is able. Uh, I mean, is he, is he able to keep people down? But he is going against Derek. Just get up, Lewis. Where jujitsu yeah. just doesn't work. So. <laughs> I was about this to say be, that, dude. <laughs> this is going to be yeah. a very interesting fight. Like as you were talking about that, I just have that clip from YouTube where it's just the the song "Just Get Up" and Derek Lewis just standing up against guys with black belts in jujitsu. Like it's no yeah. big deal. Yeah, so, you got to remember too. too. Lewis is cutting down to two sixty four. You know, Mm -hmm. he's not he's not walking around at that weight. He's not going to walk into the cage at that weight. And I'll tell you, as a grappler, one of the most disheartening feelings in the world is when you get on somebody's back and they literally just stand up and there's nothing you can do Uh. about it. You're using all the right technique, all the right sagging motions and everything else. And they just get up and it's like, oh, God, (laughs) you know, and I I can't stop thinking about Curtis, you know, and Lewis, you know, uh, people talk a lot of smack on Derek, but man, his timing is actually pretty impeccable. And Mm -hmm. if, uh, if Almeida sleeps on that, you might, you might see a, you know, one of those sleeping. Yeah. You might see him sleeping (laughs) with one of those short uppercuts. Cause that guy has chili cans for hands and it only takes one, you know? Yeah. See, I would, I would like Lewis to win. He's one of my, my favorite fighters. And I was glad we were very glad on this, on this pod to see him get, get the knockout in his last fight and kind of come up but it was so short timing that i'm not sure if we're seeing a resurgence or if he was just able to hit that opening so i will be interested to see um mm. you know Derek lewis over the course of the first first and second round it yeah. definitely I, ain't going five rounds I, that, that's for sure yeah i i think that's a great pick that it's not going to go the distance for sure um harkening back to that uh that Curtis Blades fight. That's one that I has been running through my mind too since this matchup was made. <laughs> like, I mean, like, you know, Curtis Blades obviously the most accomplished heavyweight wrestler in the UFC right now, uh, as far as accolades go and stuff and just how he yep. uses it in the cage. Um, Almeida certainly can, you know, come for that spot, but um he just doesn't have the physicality that Blades has. He doesn't have the the wrestling background that he has. You know right. what I mean? Right. Um and we've seen guys that, you know, don't have the background or, you know, the physicality, you know, out wrestle much more accomplished wrestlers. I mean, but those are examples of the greatest of all time, like a GSP or a John Jones. You know what I Correct. mean? Correct. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Almeida is at that level yet. Uh, we obviously haven't seen him in the spots to, you know, prove himself there. Um, but we saw him have some trouble against, you know, guys that may not be, you know, heralded as great. Like uh, Shamil Abdurahimov, who you know was able to give Almeida a lot of trouble there, and even somebody oh, yeah. like Jarzinho Rosenstrike, who you know I've always said if you get Jarzinho on his back, he's just going to lay flat. Um, he was able to defend that first takedown from Almeida, and if Lewis can defend the first takedown, I think there's a great chance that he can knock him out on the second takedown attempt. Like you said, with the timing of an uppercut, 
or even yep. the flying knee that he pulled out in that last fight against Ogirio de Lima. <laughs> um, I just think he has he has such crazy power that it's insane to have him at a plus three fifty or a plus four hundred or whatever they have him at against yeah. Almeida. Yeah, and I'm I'm looking at his record too, and. You know, Rosenstruck is definitely, and I, I trained with Rosenstruck down at Coconut Creek. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, based on, based on that last fight with Rosenstruck, I don't, I don't, I don't think the Vegas odds have this one correct. I think it's going to be a little bit stickier than what they've got it at. I think they have it, what, negative 500 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a little unfair. I think that it's going to be a little bit of a tighter squeeze than that, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. And uh, if if people are listening and they are gambling fans, we've always said, you know, if the odds don't seem like they're making sense, then it makes sense to put a little bit of money on the underdog. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and who's a better underdog to cash out on than Derek Lewis? You know, guys no, no kidding, bro. Yeah, no kidding. bro. It only takes one punch from the, the homie and uh, you know, you'll see him <laughs> start doing TikTok dances. Over yeah, the grid, that's right. Know? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm pretty excited for that matchup. Honestly, I, I, I am going to pick Lewis. Like I, I think, um, Almeida is a little bit one dimensional. Like I said, not in his game, so to speak, but in his takedown setups and Lewis, if nothing else has great timing, like you mentioned, Odie, and I think he can find something. I think he can find a nice uppercut. I think he can find something like that. The only people, you know, I've, I've looking over Lewis's, uh, record, you know, a lot of people tend to think of him as like somebody who doesn't do well against grapplers, but the only grapplers that he lost to are Daniel Cormier and Sergey Spivak, like two of the best heavyweight grapplers to ever do it, you know? Yeah. Um, yep. So I don't think it's really fair to write him off like that. And he's fighting somebody who's not the biggest heavyweight, um, you know, size and strength wise. Almeida certainly has amazing technique, but like I said, he's coming in on the lower end of like 230 around there. Um, so I think Lewis is going to be smart to use his physicality. I think he'd be smart to come out crazy like he did in the last fight, throw a flying <laughs> knee out the bat or you know, do anything <laughs> like that. You know, make Almeida second guess, put him on the back foot. And uh, I think if he lands on him, I don't think there's any reason that he couldn't be able to put him out. We're talking about the guy with the most knockouts in UFC history. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Jordan, you're a wrestler. You know, it's disheartening if you if you get stuffed on the first second takedown attempt, it can get it can get pretty disheartening. And I don't know if Almeida has the mental toughness to um, like, you know, Khabib, Khabib will just, you know, fail and fail and fail, but just keep going, keep going, 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 going. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if Almeida is going to have that same like wrestling and- grind set, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I'm honestly, man, I'm picking Lewis too. Yeah. I'm picking Lewis, but I sincerely hope Almeida is able to take him down, and then Lewis just stands up, and then we get a picture <laughs> of like all the blood draining from Almeida's face, realizing oh, that his, that he's like he he can't he can't keep him down. That would that would make my day. There you but go. I, yeah. I think Lewis will be able to get it done. You know, like you said, he's an underrated grappler, and exactly what you're saying, Odie. Like that's the worst feeling, especially when you're. You have a guy that you know is a better striker than you or has like that that power and you're like, Well, uh, I'm just gonna wrestle. I'm gonna wrestle him to death. And then he's defending his take your, your takedowns, and then you get to your feet and you're like, Oh, I'm I'm in trouble. Yep, yeah, that anxiety I mean, uh, takes over. It's, yeah. yeah, you start freezing oh, yeah. up, you're like, Oh shit. Yeah, I think a great example of that exact dynamic is uh Curtis Blades' last fight against Sergei Pavlovich, where mm. you know, he he comes out and shoots for a takedown almost immediately, Pavlovich stuffs it, and then you just see it looks like Curtis Blades saw a ghost. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm it, like, oh crap. <laughs> yeah, and you know, Pavlovich is like fainting the uppercuts and stuff, and like you know, showing knees, and it just makes Blades second guess the whole thing until eventually he gets you know knocked out in that fight. Yep. Um, I'm hoping that you know, I love Almeida. I've always loved Almeida. We've we've talked about him on this podcast extensively, but uh, I'm hoping that Lewis can you know turn the clock back, so to speak, and and get that kind of performance here. Um, you know, I think it's entirely possible. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. If Almeida does get it done, you know, I don't see him TKOing Derek. You know what I mean? I think he would have to, you know, work methodically position to position, maybe take the back and, you know, work out a rear naked choke. I don't see him really getting a key lock or Americana or anything like that on him because in the, in the past when somebody's been on top of Lewis and they go for that kind of submission, those are the times that he just stands up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or if they're going for a submission over position. So maybe Almeida can drag the fight out. Maybe he can wear down Lewis and, you know, work into a choke or take him down immediately and get him out of there quick. 
But I think um, I think it's not going to be that easy. I think Lewis is a, is a dog in every step of the way. And I think uh, if he lands one of those shots on him, if he starts to, you know, keep the fight on the feet, he has way more tools there. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to go with the underdog pick here, man. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we all do. That's scary. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no one. If we're if we're wrong, we're all wrong. Uh, that's all right. Yeah, we go down together. <laughs> that's know? right. That's right. <laughs> Hey, you look oh. you look Derek Lewis in the eyes and tell him that you didn't pick him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah no kidding. <laughs> um, I'm down to talk about a few other fights on this card. If you guys are, there's some really good ones here. Uh, oh, 100 percent. Bonfim brothers coming back, both of them fighting on this card. Gabriel Bonfim and Ismail Bonfim. Um, Kyle Baraglio is coming back. Adolfo Vieira. Um, let's let's go down to the uh, to the co-main event real quick and uh, discuss it. So we got Nicholas Dalby uh, fighting in welterweight. Taking on Gabriel Bonfim. Uh, Bonfim has been a finisher throughout his entire career, uh, especially in the UFC. He's coming off that victory over Trevin Giles, I believe it was, uh, not mm. too long ago, where he was able to get a submission. Um, and he's fighting Nicholas Dalby, who has never been finished, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, never been finished in around 30 pro fights. So um, pretty you know, interesting matchup here. Uh, I think Bonfim is definitely a front runner. I mean, we haven't seen him go into the third round in the UFC, um, but he comes out very hot. And I think Dalby could be a bit of a live dog if he's able to take things into the deep water, put Bonfim in positions that he hasn't been before. Uh, do you guys have any opinions on this matchup? I got I got two things that I'm I think are going to come into play here. Uh, we've got significant strike accuracy. Um, third, you know, Bonfim, 37%, Dolby, 50%. And then Dolby also has the reach advantage by two inches. So you got a two inch reach. Yeah. You got a two inch reach reach advantage and you have a pretty high significant strike accuracy disparity. Um, I think both of those things are going to come into play. And like you said, a lot of fights, no one's finished them. I think that's going to kind of take away the um, the sub advantage for Bonfim. Um, so yeah, I think I got this on uh, Dalby. Yeah, I think he's a live dog for sure. And this is another fight where the odds are incredibly skewed in the hometown fighters' direction. You know, oh my I think gosh, they have yeah. Bonfim at like minus four fifty or something like that. Um, this is one that I'm actually going to bet on because I I'm pretty I'm you know obviously I'm not certain, but I just watching these two guys over the last you know while yeah I, th- I i got dolby on this one yeah i think dolby's a live dog man like we picked uh muslim salikov against him a few uh weeks ago or a few months ago rather and he ended up just completely shattering our expectations and staying in there staying tough winning that second and third round and uh, i think he could probably do the same thing or it's very similar against bonfim if bonfim comes out too aggressive and you know doesn't conserve his energy and tries to get a finish in the first round um Dolby's not gonna you know back away you know he's still gonna be there the second and third round he's very much uh a guy that weaponizes his pace and his cardio and like you said is super accurate on the feet so I mean I'd like to see Dolby get the victory here uh, I've always been a fan of him ever since his fight in uh I think it was in the cage warriors where it was just like one of the bloodiest fights I've ever seen <laughs> um it was insane I, I can't even remember the guy's name but it was just like this wild uh okay here it is yeah Ross Houston um, they actually oh, yeah. had to stop the fight because the the mat was too bloody and they felt like it was affecting the performance of the fighters. It was it was insane. <laughs> it, it wasn't like any guy quit, you know. Um, so Dalby's a dog for sure. And um, I think he's a very live dog in this matchup. You know, if it was somebody that has been finished before or kind of gets overwhelmed in the, um, you know, when things get tough, I would be very confident in picking Bonfim. I think he's a very talented fighter, a very talented athlete. I just don't know if he's going to be able to get that kind of performance going against Dalby. You know, maybe see him. Yeah. I mean, maybe we see Bonfim, you know, mature a bit in the cage and, you know, fight a more reserved and conservative game plan and, you know, just use his, his, uh, you know, athleticism uh, to great effect against Dalby. But, um, you know, I just don't, I don't know if we've seen that out of him yet. And uh, I'd be very, uh, I'd be happy to see him, you know, add that skill, add that wrinkle to his game. But I think where they stand right now, I think Dolby has a great chance of getting the upset, probably by decision. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. A couple other fights on this card that are really interesting. They got Rodrigo Nascimento versus Dante Mays, another heavyweight scrap. 
I think this is an easy pick for Nascimento. I think it's a showcase fight for him in Brazil. Um, he's a you know very talented grappler in his own right. Solid on the feet, likes to use his knees in the clinch. Dante May is uh, a little bit of a wild man, so to speak, uh, or at least you know likes to use that that striking uh, to surprise people. Throws like some wild overhand rights, throws some kicks too, which is good to see at heavyweight. Um, but yeah, I think Nascimento just has a bit more of uh, tools in the in the in the toolbox to get this one done. I expect him to come yeah. out with a very wrestling heavy game plan, you know. Yeah, Rodrigo, I trained with him for a few years down on Coconut Creek. He's got uh, great ability to slow down those spazzy fighters. I mean, yeah, yeah that guy, his, he's so much stronger than what he looks. Like, uh, if you just look at his body, you might think, oh, that guy, you know, he's got a little bit of fluff, you know, maybe he's not all that strong. Dude, that guy can lift a truck. So I think he's going to get a hold of Maze and just get sticky on him. And yeah, that's going to be all she wrote. Oh shit! I'm I'm actually looking at his record. I didn't realize they fought before. Uh, in 2020, they they had a fight, and Rodrigo got the submission in the second round. I think that's yeah, I'm not it's probably going to happen again. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know why yeah. they made this. It, if not quicker, because yeah. uh, Rodrigo also has a pretty high fight IQ, and he's got great coaching. Like mm-hmm. he's got really good coaching. So I mean, they're going to have him ready for this rematch. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, another guy that we want to talk about here is uh, Kyle Baraglio. We've discussed him on the pod before. Uh, Jordan and I are big fans of Kyle. Um, he's got an awesome, well-rounded game plan, but his jiu-jitsu is really where he butters his bread. Um, his pace and his cardio are, as well are great tools for him. Uh, he's fighting Abus Magomedov, uh, who is known for coming in the UFC and getting, a, I think, like a 19-second knockout over Dustin Stoltzfutz. And then they put him right into a top five matchup against Sean Strickland and Sean Strickland made him look like an unranked fighter. You know, yes. uh, he he stayed tough in there and Abus tried to take him out in the first round. And when he couldn't completely drowned. Uh, so it certainly seems like Abus has uh, a lot of cardio problems. I think that's something that Kyle Baraglio is going to be very smart to exploit. You know, you look at his record, a lot of his finishes come in the second round, third round. You know what I mean? Early in his career, obviously, getting guys out of there in the first round. But I think that just kind of happens when you're first starting out and you have this kind of talent. Um, in, in his UFC career, he's much more the ty- type of guy to wear somebody down. And I just don't think that spells very well for a boost. Um, I'm going to go with Baraglio here, probably by submission, uh, if not just by finish in the second or third um, I can definitely see him getting uh, Magomedov out of there. Let's not say that Magomedov has no, you know, chance in this fight. You know what I mean? He's a he's a very dangerous fighter. Um, but um, Baraglio has shown to, you know, be able to finish guys and beat up guys who have a uh, very similar skill set to Abus. Abus's best uh, weapons are his kicks, I believe. You know, his front kick is nasty. Um, he likes to throw like a switch kick, uh, his light kicks and stuff like that. And the fight that really gives me a lot of confidence in uh, in um, Kyle Baraglio here is his fight with Mahmoud Muradov, who has shown that kind of Muay Thai style game. Uh, you know, he's fought out of uh, Thailand before, fought out of you know Kazakhstan with their Sanda style. Um, so you know, I, I saw Baraglio use a lot of uh, pressure and a lot of you know jujitsu and wrestling and just general pace to to smother the kicking game of um, Muradov. And I think he's going to mm-hmm. be smart to use that same kind of game plan here against Abus. Yeah. He's yeah. a, he's a Southpaw too, which, uh, you know, I don't think Megan Medov, I'm looking at his record. I don't know if he's had another high level Southpaw and people kind of sleep on how much that makes a difference. Yeah. Cause if you're not, if you're not training against Southpaws constantly, it does definitely give them the advantage. Um, so yeah, yeah. that's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, we've even seen, you know, at the highest level that that southpaw edge, you know, uh, I'm thinking about Islam Makacha versus mm-hmm. Alexander yep. Volkanovsky. Yeah, why you got yep. to bring that up to me again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. I love Islam. I love Islam. I can't yeah. help it. I love that guy. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm a huge fan of both guys. You know, yeah, it was it's tough not to see. it's not hate on Islam. It's just that I, I I don't like seeing that head kick flash in my head again. Yeah, yeah. I. I hate it when we are watching a fight and you, you like want both guys to win. That's the worst yeah, when you love them both, you know, oh, yeah. you're like, That's you don't want to see yeah, either I, of them lose. I, I, I was like, I was watching that in a bar and I, I looked like one of my boys just took that kick to the head. Yeah. Like, word. That's how it felt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but he was able to use that southpaw stance, you know, uh, to give Volkanovski a lot of trouble with the body kicks, with the leg kicks, obviously with the head kick they set up there. Um, mm. And, you know, that we're talking about one of the highest level fighters in MMA history in Volkanovski. Yep. So if he can fall to those pitfalls, so can Abu Magomedov, you know. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to make a little bit of a difference for sure. But I've got I've got Brilio in the uh, in the second by sub. I like that pick. I think that's a great pick. I'm probably going to tail that, honestly. Um, but yeah, uh, a couple other fights here. Hadolfo Vieira is coming back. Uh, he's fighting Armin Petrosian. Adolfo Vieira is a probably the most accoladed jujitsu fighter in the UFC right now. Um, you know, since guys like Maya and Jacare and Verdum are out of the sphere, um, Vidolfo came in with, you know, immense accolades, gold medals and world championships in jujitsu. So uh, he's fighting somebody who's pretty much the antithesis of that in Armand Petrosian, who's had an extensive glory kickboxing career. So this is a classic matchup of striker versus grappler. Um, I think in MMA, both of them have shown signs of being well-rounded, but Petrosian is definitely the more well-rounded fighter. Um, he's got the length on his side. He's got the reach on his side. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> uh, Vieira certainly can finish this fight if he can get it to the ground. I just don't know if he's going to have that opportunity against Petrosian, who is so light on his feet, who knows how to stay on the outside and use that jab, use those front kicks. Do you guys have a pick in this month in this matchup? I've got okay. Yeah, I've got Vera. I mean, yeah, the, the strike accuracy, and then, dude, I'm just a believer in in grapplers. You know, yeah. I mean, just time and time again, we've seen how this one plays out. Um, statistically, I think the data is on my side here. I think I think we've got Vera, probably a second or third round sub. Yeah, I think um, for sure we've seen the the grappler striker matchup play out that way i mean we saw it in ufc one you know what i mean mm-hmm. um i just feel like uh petrosian has uh some tools that are really going to give Vieira some trouble and i've seen oh, Vieira yeah. kind of you know maybe not fade out but like get very uh demoralized when he can't get that takedown you know similar to what we were talking about with blades and pavlovich for and, sure um so it's I definitely think- not going to be an easy fight and it's it's not one i'd put a ton of money on but yeah. yeah, I mean, the odds have him as a pick em, So, you know, Vegas thinks it's a 50 50 fight. Uh, I tend to agree. I think it's really going to come down to the first few exchanges. You know, if yeah. Vieira can get the takedown early while they're dry, he'll for sure get him out of there early. You know, but Petrosian's never been submitted in MMA. I mean, he's only had 10 pro fights, but he's never been submitted. Obviously, he's never fought somebody to the level of Vieira. Um, but I think you can say the same about Vieira never fighting yep. somebody to the level of striking as Petrosian. So I'm yeah, really excited. Definitely to see how a this tester fight. fight. Definitely yeah. a tester fight. Yep. Hundred percent. It's going to show us where both these guys are in the areas that they were not, you know, growing up in. So I'm really excited to see how it plays out. I think I am going to go with Petrosian. Um, I think he has a little bit more of high level experience at, in the MMA, at least. You know, obviously not in jujitsu or anything else, but. Uh, in MMA, he's shown to you know be able to um, really take it out of some of these guys and uh, demoralize them as the fight goes on. I think that's part of his game is to make people frustrated, and I don't know if that's going to play well into Vieira's uh, into his game plan. That being said, they are in Sao Paulo. The crowd is going to be on Vieira's side for sure, and uh, mm-hmm. that might affect Petrosian in itself. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, so 50-50 on that pick. Jordan, do you have a, a pick for that that fight? No. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> just, nope, not even gonna get in that conversation. <laughs> no, I said uh, I'm the casual. One, I'm the casual one. This hardcore casual. Fair, fair. Uh, there's a few other fights on this card that look pretty interesting. Ismail Bonfi inviting Vince Pichel. This is a another uh, dynamic that we've seen play out before, where you know they put a fighter who has been there, done that, and Vince Pichel, somebody that's you know seen every walk of uh you know martial art in the uh, in the octagon. He's fought high level wrestlers like Mark Madsen. He's fought, you know, great strikers like, you know, uh Roosevelt Roberts or, you know, Anthony and Jaquani. Um, and at the same time, you know, uh has been in there with these tough dudes. And I, I can't remember him ever being finished. Let me look at his record. Uh okay, yeah. So he's been finished twice in his career, once by Gregor Gillespie and then once by Rustam Kabalov. So certainly, you know, nobody to, you know, be ashamed of losing to in that fashion. He's fighting Ismail Bonfim, who's another, uh, like his brother, like his older brother, Gabriel, uh, super explosive athlete, uh, great, you know, shot selection on the feet. 
and an awesome jujitsu game behind him. So I think Bonfim definitely has the tools to win this fight. Um, he hasn't fought somebody who is as, you know, tough and as, you know, has that veteran status like Vince Pichel. Uh, so I think that Pichel can definitely give him some trouble there, but I do think that the grappling is ultimately going to be the deciding factor. Um, Bonfim has like a great wrestling and grappling game that he's happy to use. Uh, Pichel, on the other hand, has been susceptible to those kind of grappling performances against Mark Madsen, against Greg Gillespie, against Rustam Khabalov. Uh, these are guys that were able to take advantage of him in the grappling realm. And I think uh, the UFC knows what they're doing by putting this fight together here. And um, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to go with Bonfim. He's a huge favorite. And I think it's for a reason. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on this one. I mean, we've got a 40 year old at 155 pounds. I mean, I'm not yeah, saying that that's yeah, that's tough. I mean, we're setting up Bonfim for a long career. I think that you're right. The UFC knows exactly what they're doing here. Um, yeah, he's given them a a legitimate, you know. A legitimate win against a legitimate fighter, but yeah, I passed his prime, and yep, that's that. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to see Pichel pull out that kind of performance. You know, if we see like a Tito Ortiz versus Ryan Bader kind of thing oh, going man, on it's here, it's great when that happens, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that it warms my heart. You know what I mean? We might do something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, root for the old guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do. Yeah. I always do. We might see something yeah. like that in the Lewis versus Almeida main event, hopefully. Um, but I just don't know if Pichel has. He doesn't have like that earth shattering power, or like you know any like. His best tool is his pace or his cardio rather and like his his doggedness. You know, the dude's not going to go anywhere. So yeah, um, I think yeah. Bonfim would have to really, uh, you know, put it on him and put him in positions that he doesn't want to be in and either find a submission or just, you know, wear down the clock and beat him up, which I think he's totally capable of doing. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I think go I think if Bonfim, yeah, if he shows up healthy, he's he's got this one. Yeah, I mean, we saw him, you know, kind of blow his load, so to speak, in that last fight against Benoit St. Denis. Benoit St. Denis is a super talented fighter in his own right. So um, I'm really excited to see him in his next fight against Favola. That's coming up next week. But we'll, we'll talk about that on the next episode. Uh, cool, one more cool. fight that I wanted to touch on here. Uh, actually, two. I didn't see it. Angela Hill's fighting. But Renat Fakradina versus Eliza Zaleski Dos Santos. This is another kind of striker versus grappler matchup. Uh, and this one is kind of the opposite of the ones that we've been talking about, where they kind of gave the hometown fighter a less favorable matchup. Renat Fakhradinov has an extensive uh, grappling background out in Russia, combat, sambo, master of sport and sambo. You know, like the dude's been there and done that as far as the grappling world goes and uh, is coming off of a submission win over Kevin Lee in the first round in his last fight where he was able to put the the beat down on him and force him into a bad shot and then catch up that submission. So Fakhradinov is certainly on the up and up. He's got a lot of knockouts on his record. He's got a lot of submissions on his record. And he's fighting Elias Lesko Santos, who is also, uh, you know, an aging athlete in this welterweight division. And, you know, even though he's coming off of a two-fight win streak, um, he just seems to have been really slowed down these last few years. And before his last fight was on, like, a, you know, a two-year layoff, um, and I think we saw him, you know, come in looking a lot slower and a lot less reaction time than he had in the past. We've known him to be like this awesome striker. He's throwing like spinning kicks. And I think he even has a victory over Sean Strickland, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, he has a, a knockout with the spinning wheel kick over Sean Strickland. So that was Sean Strickland's last fight at welterweight, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, um, lots changed since then. Uh, hey, give I that think, man a title shot. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> they're uh, they're setting up. Uh, Zaleski here. I think uh, Renat Fakhradinov has a ton of tools in his back pocket, and I expect him to probably get a finish here. You know, um, we'll see how it happens. So, um, another fight that I wanted to touch on was Angela Hill versus Denise Gomez. I love Angela Hill. Anytime she fights, I'm I'm always gonna watch. You know what I mean? Uh, she's got that super veteran style that you you rarely see in these women's weight classes where she has a great jujitsu game. She has a great uh, striking game. She can stay on the outside and poke her jab and stay on, you know, stay float, stay lighting. But uh, really what I think is her best tool is her clinch. Um, she's very strong in the clinch. She's, a, she's got a lot of Muay Thai experience, and uh, she likes to grab that double tie and, you know, knee, knee girls' bodies off, knee them in the head, throw some elbows, and really just stay tough in there. Um, she's fighting Denise Gomez, who is strong as shit. Uh, if you see her, she's jacked as hell and she hits really hard. She's coming off of two knockouts in the UFC. Um, before that, she she lost a decision to Loma Look Bon Me, which is the fight that is kind of giving me pause to pick her against Angela Hill because 
Loma used that tie clinch extensively in that fight and was able to really bully Denise Gomez there. Um, where Gomez is a very strong athlete and very physical fighter. Uh, it seems like her Muay Thai knowledge or Muay Thai clinch may be a little bit of her weak spot. And I think Angela Hill is going to be very smart to use that position, you know, kind of uh, either stay all the way in or all the way out, you know. And uh, I can see her definitely winning this fight, probably by decision. But, you know, we'll see how it, how it shakes out. Um, all right. If you guys are uh, ready to wrap things up, let's let's get into the betting slip portion of the fight card. Uh, Jordan, who you got on this card? If you're going to pick anybody to bet on, who you betting on? Hold on, let me pull it back up. I definitely got Lewis getting it done against Almeida. Uh, I'm going with both Bonfim brothers. I think they're both getting it done. I think they're trying to prop up both of them. Hmm. Uh, we got our boy Baralio going to get it done. And I think Rodrigo gets it done. That's a good a good card there. Uh, Delaney, who, who you got on this card if you're going to bet? Yeah, I got Lewis as the underdog. I think that's a good a good steal. Um, I've got Dalby, another one underdog. I'll put some money on, and then Rodrigo. I'm giving him the win. Um, and then I probably won't put money on much else. But as far as who's getting the win, I've got Barilio. Um, and let's see here, Vieira and uh, Bonfim. Sounds good. Um, my car looks a lot similar to yours, Odie. Um, I'm, I'm taking Lewis in the main event. I am going to sprinkle a little bit on Dalby cause I think the odds are kind of crazy for somebody that's as tough as he is. Um, I'm yep. going to go with Rodrigo and Baralio both by submission. I think that's how they're going to do their fights. Um, and then I'm going to go with Petrosian and I'll pick Bonfim, but I'm going to go with Bonfim over one and a half, uh, against Pichel. It's been a while since we've seen Pichel get finished early. Uh, and his best attribute is his, you know, his ruggedness, so to speak. So, uh, yep. yeah, I think Bonfim is either going to get a late finish or a decision victory. So I'm going with him over one and a half. And then I'll, I'll put some money on Angela Hill, too. Um, there you go. Yeah, it's been a it's been a pleasure, dude. Uh, so the ton hey, of yeah, fun. That was fun, guys. Yeah, I liked I liked that. That was a that was a good show you guys put on. And uh, yeah, I hope to be on in the future, man. I like talking to you guys. That was a good good way well, to start I, my I, Wednesday. I, Hey, dude! If uh, if next Wednesday you're free, we got a we got a heavyweight uh, co-main event that is needing some talking about. Oh yeah, Popovich hey, and you Aspinall. guys, you guys just say when. I'm down for it. Hell yeah, sounds good, bro. I really appreciate you coming on, man. You're you're a fucking beast. And uh, if you do decide to get back in the cage, or if somebody gives you the offer, that makes sense. I'm really looking forward to seeing your next fight. You know, um, cool. Really appreciate you coming on, Odie. Seriously, thanks so much, man. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate um, you guys. We'll talk to you all later, I guess. Hell yeah. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for listening to Technical Knockout, the hardcore casual MMA podcast. Thanks again to Odie Delaney and Jordan for coming through and, you know, always giving their insight. Appreciate y'all. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode, y'all. We got some uh, really exciting stuff down the pipeline. UFC in Madison Square Garden, Prohoshka versus Pereira, and Pavlovich versus Aspinall. Really excited to get down into that card next week. So appreciate y'all for listening, and hopefully uh, we make y'all some money this week. Take it easy.